Hey, I'd like to welcome you to another episode of Mission Matters. My name is Adam Torres, and if you'd like to apply to be a guest in the show, just head on over to missionmatters.com and click on Be Our Guest to Apply. All right, so today I have Earl Hall on the line, and he's CEO of Access.ai. Earl, welcome to the show. Thanks very much for having me. All right, Earl, so uh, excited to get into today's topic. So we'll talk about fintech's role in the future of casino gaming. Uh, But before we do that, um, we'll start this episode off the way that we start them all with our Mission Matters Minute. So Earl, we at Mission Matters amplify stories for entrepreneurs, executives, and experts. That's our mission. Earl, what mission matters to you? Only one, really. And uh, that's, it's a very simple one. It's been 10 years in the making, if you can believe it, but it's to make the land-based gaming industry safe first, fun second, because it really cannot be fun if it's not safe. So how do we do that? It's pretty simple. Our job is to bring our mission, our job, same thing for me, is to bring legitimacy to the gaming industry, to the land-based gaming industry through traceability and through transparency of transactions. That's really the baseline from which we've built everything that we do. And that's really what matters the most to us because at the end of the day, you either have a job when you go to work or you have a mission that matters. Well, uh, at Access, our mission really matters. And really what we're trying to build or create uh, is to leave a legacy of a much more transparent and much more legitimate and a much safer industry so that people can have fun because there is no potential for money laundering. There is no potential for addictive gambling because you have to call it gambling when there's no guardrails. It cannot be gaming unless it's safe. Mm. So that's what we do. It's great. L- love bringing mission-based individuals on the line to share why they do what they do, like what motivates them to make a difference in the marketplace. So I'm um, excited to uh, dive deeper into access.ai and also um, the idea of gaming and how to make it safe. But um, where did all this start for you? Like, how did you go, go on this path of fintech and gaming? Like, where'd that begin? The, the genius of access came from trying to solve a problem about 12 years ago in the industry where um, there were some laws that changed that required transactions to be stored, traced. And there was the very first laws being enacted in certain countries Mm -hmm. for cashless gaming. When I say cashless, in those days it was smart cards. In other words, Mm -hmm. no cash on a casino floor. You had to go to a cashier's desk. You had to get a card, you had to load the card up and then head out to the machine, which creates a very traceable uh, gaming session. We were asked and invited to be able to solve that problem in the country of Mexico when their new law came online. Mm. And this is way back before cloud was cool. (laughs) <laughs> but considering the crazy bunch of geniuses of access, yeah. uh, we thought cloud was the simplest and the easiest way to go. Wow. So uh, back in 2006, seven, the, the startup was really underway. 2008. <laughs> That's really startups. early, by the way. So you said this is 2006 or seven is when you were thinking about cloud? Uh, when we were actually programming cloud, yes. Wow. That, that's pretty early. <laughs> now, 2008, the product started to come to life. Uh, 2009, we had reporting servers. We had alert servers. This is all in the cloud, of course. Mm -hmm. Then we had a cashless server. And from there, 2010, 2011, Mm -hmm. we got a great foothold and started to expand to where today we're in over 40 countries around the world. Wow, what what an amazing story! Um, and and seeing you know, it, it all started from an idea, right? Like like all businesses, but it all started from an idea. And in this case, you were you were looking to solve a problem. Now, there's some there's some individuals out there that are you know entrepreneurs, would be entrepreneurs. Maybe they're not quite as far along in their journey as you are with Access.ai, but but you know, it all started again with you for from an idea. So. 
the difference here in this case is that you took that idea, you took that problem and you went to solve it and created a company around it. And as you mentioned now in over 40 countries, um, going from idea to execution or, or implementing that, um, that solution. So it's a very tricky thing. Um, and whether it's in FinTech, whether whatever your product is, whatever the solution is that you're trying to come up with, what would be your advice to the entrepreneurs out there that are all working, let's just say on their own problems and on their own solutions and how to go over from that, like to, that concept, that idea to actual implementation, like what kind of things would you tell them? Oh, uh, so simple. First of all, uh, I always see these debates on LinkedIn between bootstrapping an organization and going for angel investors. Yes. All I can say is, first of all, the amount of money you're going to need to succeed is a direct coefficient of how you dare to dream. Mm. If your dream is small, maybe you don't need angels around you. But mm -hmm. if you dare to dream big... You need a very solid, a very intelligent, very poised individuals around you. And if you want to know what the secret weapon of access is, it's simple. It's our, it's our team. That's, that's a okay. given. That's, products are secondary to people in a real company. Yeah. But the real secret to being an entrepreneur mm -hmm. is you have to find that angel Mm -hmm. that investor, that seasoned successful person that mm -hmm. has that can see through the fog to say, yep, this dream actually has a shot at making it. And mm -hmm. if I put our team aside for a second, the reason why access is where it is today and the reason why I'm sitting here today is because I have the strongest mm -hmm. board of directors and the best shareholders I've worked with in my entire career. Mm -hmm. They saw 10 years ago what we are starting to deploy today, if you can believe it. And they haven't lost faith ever once. And every time we needed new financing rounds, more capital injections, hitting obstacles left, right, and center, mm -hmm. they were the calming force for us to continue the fight. So yeah. my, my, that's a long answer, but the short answer would be to an entrepreneur, if you're smart, don't go it alone. Hmm. find that hand that you, that can stay on your shoulder so that you can fight the fight and you have the angels behind you making sure that you can run the marathon because building a company is not a sprint. Well, it is. It's a series of sprints, 24 yeah. hours a day. But building a company is really a marathon. And to do that, you need a very seasoned, strong, and believing angels around you like Access does. Hmm. Our shareholder base is absolutely unbelievable. Ah, so great advice there um, and, and a great story. Um, so going a step further into today's topic, so the future of fintech and what that looks like in the role of casino gaming and, and this whole, you know, cash to cashless system. I mean, you've been involved with it for quite some time now. Obviously, it's a it's a big deal. Like you said, you're implementing it now, but now it's in the news. It's in the headlines, you know, changes in laws making change for gaming, uh, making it maybe more accessible. Um, so a lot of movement recently um, in the last year or, so, or two. Um, so what is this, what, what are you seeing in the, in the landscape right now that just really interests you? Well, first of all, and um, one of the faults of my personality, when I get asked the question, I always give the answer. I don't like butter it up. So first of all, what we're seeing is whatever, what always happens. We're seeing a level of ignorance. Hmm. So first of all, cashless is really two different things. Cashless, closed loop cashless and open loop cashless. Mm. Very simply put, the casino industry has been built since day one on a closed loop system. In other mm. words, you walk into a casino, you either deposit your money, you put it on deposit, you put it into their bank account, you insert it into a machine, it goes into a cash box. They have their own float, casino float. Mm. That's a closed loop system. When we built access, what we did to respect the industry is we built a closed loop system to mirror all of the processes, everything that's already done, but bring mm -hmm. them on a more efficient transportation system. That's all. Now what we have, uh, COVID carries, cash carries COVID. Everybody knows yeah. that. So during COVID, the, the land-based gaming industry started to say, hmm, maybe it's time to go out into the real world and bring the real world in. Hmm. which is really cool. 
<laughs> and the best example we have of that is Starbucks. Starbucks is probably the best example of a closed loop system using open loop providers to bring money into the system. Mm -hmm. So what we have in 2022 now is every open loop fintech provider in the world trying to figure out how to get into the gaming industry. Because mm. you're just not going to show up to the gaming industry. Hey, I have an app. Uh, you can take money out of your bank account and you can bring it into the casino. Where are you going to bring it? Are you going to bring it to the cashier's cage? Are you going to bring it to the machine? How is it going to get inside of the closed loop system? So mm -hmm. it's exciting to see. I get regular, I get on average one email every three to four days from a, from an open loop cashless uh, fintech from mm -hmm. New York, from London, from Singapore saying, hey, apparently you're the largest closed loop cashless provider in the world. That is true. Five yes. million players in real time, 15, 16 million dollars a day going through our server, mm -hmm. about 23 to 26 million transactions a day on our cloud. Yes, we're the biggest closed loop provider. Mm -hmm. But the open loop people that are coming will have to adapt to our industry to mm -hmm. make sure that their money transportation system meets mm -hmm. all of the rules, all the regulations, all of the patents and everything else that's coming. So we're in an exciting moment. Everybody's knocking on the door of the land-based casino yeah. industry. Uh, it makes me very happy because mm -hmm. cashless means KYC. Mm -hmm. So cashless, FinTech is cashless. Cashless equals know your client, which mm -hmm. means we're on the cusp of the gaming industry becoming a traceable event, mm -hmm. which is what makes our heart beat. Mm-hmm. Because when things are traceable, that means legitimacy comes to the forefront. Yeah. And that's why we're here. Mission matters. That's our mission. It's legitimacy. And so how does this affect really the the, the traditional land base um, casino? Is it more opportunity? I mean, tell me a little bit more about how that affects the traditional system. At this point in time, I'd say there's a threat. Mm -hmm. And the threat is, is that the open loop providers that are showing up, mm -hmm. what they're trying to provide is an app mm -hmm. that will allow the person to directly cash into the slot machine and then mm -hmm. go away, mm -hmm. which really undermines the entire business model of the gaming industry. And that's what we steered away from. We kept getting asked, Earl, why don't you take money from bank accounts and put it right into the casino? I said, well, you know, that's not how the casino industry works. The casino yeah. industry works is that people come in with their money and the money is deposited inside of a closed loop. Mm -hmm. Just the way Starbucks works. You have your credit card on your Starbucks app. Yep. But if you're smart and you want loyalty points, what you do is you transfer the money from your credit card over to the closed loop mm -hmm. app that Starbucks has. Once you're inside of their app, their environment, their closed loop, then you can go out and buy your lattes and all that stuff. Everybody yeah. buys, but you're inside of the closed loop environment and the open loop is just the money transportation system. Mm -hmm. So right now, the threat is, is that some casinos that don't understand this dichotomy of open has to stay outside, closed loop mm -hmm. is what you already have, and technologies like Access just make it more efficient. Mm -hmm. There is a threat that some uh, casinos will go directly open loop, which will be a threat to their own existence in the long term because their mm -hmm. casino float, their money on deposit will be sent to the open loop, which yeah. is the dream of an open loop company. And that's really the education that we offer because we can do open and closed loop. Mm -hmm. We chose closed for a very simple reason is that we were trying to protect the mm -hmm. casino operators to make sure that their money on deposit or their float yeah. is the word they use, that it belongs to them. Mm -hmm. So that's the reason why we chose closed. Uh, we will start offering a form of open loop in the future as ATM machines go away, as direct deposit goes mm -hmm. away and all that stuff. So as the fintech industry becomes more efficient, we mm -hmm. will start adding on features to mirror what other industries are doing. But our primary role is to protect the player first from themselves. Mm -hmm. Our secondary role is to protect the casinos 
from the players <laughs> because there's money launders, there's addictive yeah. gamblers, there's organized crimes, there's all kinds yeah. of things that hang out and it's our job to keep them away. Mm -hmm. And then it's our job to make sure that the casinos are as leg legitimate and transparent mm -hmm. as they can be so that they are a upstanding segment or sector inside of a mm -hmm. state or a province's total economy. So we have three really missions inside of our core mission. One is to, for the society, the other one is for our clients, and the third one is for the actual consumers or what they call the players. So speaking of uh, traceability and like a lot of change that's happening right now in the industry, just overall, like uh, how does the blockchain and crypto fit into this, uh, into this cast of characters? That's a great question because if, if you don't mind, I'd like to separate those two because Absolutely. it's kind of like saying uh, an ATM machine and fiat currency. Mm -hmm. The ATM machine is the physical transportation system. Mm -hmm. So all blockchain is, is a network of computers highly secure mm -hmm. to be able to transport information, transactions, because information is a transaction, mm -hmm. around a network in a highly secure manner. Mm -hmm. So how does blockchain fit into this? Well, there's something going on in Europe right now that affects me very deeply, psychologically, physically, mentally. Yeah. The, the genocide that's going on in uh, Ukraine right now. Well, as people have seen about a week or two before uh, the genocide started and ongoing now, the cyber war mm -hmm. has increased exponentially. Mm -hmm. And the most unsafe place you can be on this planet right now is by having a local server. So if you have a server on your property, if you're dealing with in a client server environment, if mm. you're not cloud right now, you're in a lot of trouble for the next three years, because when you're in a client server environment, it's 10 times easier to penetrate and to hack. Mm. But when you're in the cloud, you're still vulnerable because security is never 100%. Mm -hmm. So we had blockchain back in the army, a form of blockchain. Uh, and in today's world, if you're using one of the premier blockchains, mm -hmm. like the, the Microsofts, the IBMs, the AWSs, uh, mm -hmm. the Cardano's out there, uh, the Cardano's out there. So if you're using these things that are out there, and if you noticed, I didn't mention Ethereum and I didn't mention blo uh, Bitcoin. I stay away from those two. Uh, there, uh, Ethereum is in an amazing maturation moment right now. I can't wait mm -hmm. to see what's happening this summer. And, you know, Bitcoin is Bitcoin. Uh, but that being said, blockchain is the only 100% way to ensure security of information right now. Mm -hmm. Because if it's done right, you can put infinite random generated passwords mm -hmm. in and around information and financial transactions mm -hmm. so that it's just not financially or physically viable to try to hack. Mm. So that's what blockchain is. We, we've been using blockchain for, I don't know, five years now, mm -hmm. just to make sure that the core, the, the transactional core of who we are is mm -hmm. safe. That being said, cryptocurrency, there's a lot of noise around cryptocurrency, mm -hmm. but all cryptocurrency is a new form of payment. So it's a new bartering tool. In 10 years, we won't even be talking about cryptocurrency anymore. We'll be talking about, do you remember the days of paper? Yeah. Because paper is the most un inefficient way of purchasing something on this planet. Mm -hmm. The risk of money laundering, the risk of reproducing paper is infinite. Yeah. Whereas cryptocurrency is one of the very most safe ways of making a transaction. The only thing is that because of the fact that cryptocurrency started out with a heavy uh, mm -hmm. organized crime base, it took a long while for the cryptocurrency exchanges, the e-wallets, the, the exchanges where you can buy and sell cryptocurrency. Yeah. It took a long while for them to get their KYC, know your client processes mm -hmm. up to speed. But if anybody has Coinbase, they just did a great update at the beginning of this month. 
by the time we hit 2025, we won't even be thinking about cryptocurrency or digital mm -hmm. currency because we'll have both. 95% of transactions in two years will all be e-wallet based mm -hmm. and cryptocurrency will be mainstream because we will have gone from anonymous transactions to KYC based transactions. Mm -hmm. And the casino industry has the same problem, but they have it with fiat currency. They have it with paper, not crypto. So people walk in and out of casinos all the time. You don't know who they are. You don't know what they're doing. You don't know where the money came from. You don't know if it smells bad. You don't know if it smells good. That's really the base of the struggle for legitimacy in the casino industry. Mm -hmm. But as cashless shows up, the path to legitimacy is automatic. And once you're in a path of legitimacy and you are cashless, mm -hmm. The difference between an inbound fiat transaction from your bank account or an inbound Bitcoin transaction, mm -hmm. there's zero difference because both of them have to be KYC'd with your passport, your driver's license, maybe your light bill, and maybe three, four, five touch points. You will see in the very, very near future a standard emerge, which mm -hmm. will be called your KYC credibility score where the more you can prove who you are, the more mm -hmm. legitimate you are to do a transaction. Yeah. Which yeah, means whether you're cashing Ethereum or you're cashing in $500 from an anonymous gift card, well, mm -hmm. it doesn't really matter because the KYC onus is on you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's interesting um, that you say this. As I, as we just accepted our first here at Mission Matters, accepted our first transaction from crypto, um, through crypto. And when I was setting up, you know, the business account and all that, we went through Coinbase, I think it was. And they, um, and when I was thinking about back into my finance days, so for those that have been watching the show for a long time, I was in finance for almost 14 years. Now I've been in media now going on five, six years full time. But when I was answering all those questions and all those other things, it reminded me of like a bank application, like just like a bank application. And when I was yep. thinking about the know your client rules back from my banking days and all the things that I had to do when I would be opening up a, an account for a client, like I didn't, um, I didn't notice much difference. I mean, for a very basic bank account in this case. Um, and, uh, and I didn't notice much difference. And I was like, oh, getting back. Back to that concept of traceability and everything that you're talking about, like this makes sense. And especially for the legitimacy of the accounts, the accounting part of it, the, the taxes that have to be paid, all those other things um, that, that come in line with accepting a different type of uh, currency for a product in this case that, that we did. I think it's interesting. I think it's interesting. And I think you're right. Like, I don't know how many years or the timeline, but um, in the near future, we'll be looking at it and it won't be a, whether it's a crypto transaction or another, whatever, it'll just be, it'll just be like another account really, in my opinion. Exactly. Yeah. And that's the way we set up our e-wallet for our mm -hmm. clients is that you can click on your bank account, your credit mm -hmm. card, you can click on your uh, cryptocurrency why because as our clients move towards a bridge between mm -hmm. closed and open loop cashless mm -hmm. we want to ensure that we're the gatekeeper for kyc because a shout out to the gaming industry we have many thousands of people working worldwide in state mm -hmm. and local governments creating tremendous regulation and policy so that any employee, any supplier, any technology company in the gaming industry, they must go through a tremendous rigorous process that some jurisdictions require 10 years of bank statements, five years of bank accounts, credit cards. It's really a legitimate process. It's, it, I'm very proud to be in the gaming industry for the incredible extreme level of legitimacy that the states and the provinces run their operations mm. for people to work in the industry. The next step, and it's companies like Access that have mm -hmm. to lead this charge, is pushing that level of legitimacy out to the actual players because the players that have nothing to hide 
already have a Facebook. They're already publishing their meals mm -hmm. from last night. They're checking in on the strip, showing that they're having a good time. Mm -hmm. They have their GPS on for their Starbucks and their Uber app. Yeah. So they're already KYC as much as you could ever believe. Mm -hmm. So the lion's share, the majority of the players in mass gaming and the regular gaming floors, mm -hmm. they're already KYC'd by their smartphone anyway. Mm -hmm. So they have nothing to hide. So the real, one of the submissions we have at Access is bridging that gap between the real world of mm -hmm. the vast majority of players that are already KYC through Facebook, through Uber, mm -hmm. through all of those other apps, and just making sure that they come into the gaming industry and they're recognized because mm -hmm. they're safe. They want to be kept safe and they only have one mission. They want to have fun. Yeah. It's great. So what type of, um, so getting, focusing a little bit more on access.ai, I mean, tell us a little bit more about the company and exactly like the types of um, companies that you work with. So we have three different types of clients. Uh, and just, just to say, we started off this company with the same vision that Apple had. So mm -hmm. we wanted to build our own IoT device, get it inside of the slot machines mm -hmm. so that we could control the security, the speed, the, the legitimacy, and the traceability of all of the data. That was, yeah. that was a lot of work. It was about four years, a couple of really amazing geniuses in our team that, that got our IoT practice uh, to, the, to the highest degree. Then we worked very hard on the cloud side because as Apple built their iPhone, the real vision behind the iPhone was to get the data. Hmm. Because once you have the data and you have true data that can't be tampered with, mm -hmm. then you can build alert systems. Like we have a full alert package. If anybody tampers with the machine, cuts a wire, does anything illicit, mm -hmm. automatically bells and whistles go off in people's phones and on our management mm -hmm. consoles and stuff like that. Then once you get past the business analytics package that we have, mm -hmm. you get to our app store where you have cash lists and all the other things we have. Mm -hmm. We had a vision that was unfortunately or fortunately 10, 15 years ahead of the whole industry. The mm -hmm. cool thing is people are starting to catch up to us. A shout out to the government of Poland, uh, the, uh, the head of gaming in the government of Poland some people hailed him as crazy back then, about seven years ago. Other people hailed him as a, a visionary. But he decided that he was going to bring online the very first real-time cashless cloud blockchain KYC anti-money laundering system for the government of Poland. Wow. <laughs> and even crazier than that, he chose us to do it. So... Uh, the government of Poland really has the most advanced central monitoring system in the world. Mm. We love working with governments because a government's first and most important mandate is to protect the citizens from themselves and from others. Mm. So that was a really crazy, amazing thing that we got to do in Poland. Then we got to bring them up on a real-time countrywide fintech solution, which mm. was real-time cashless for the entire country. Wow. Yeah, well, that was a lot of fun. So we served the government market first. We served the casino market and shout out to Native America in the United States. The Native American market is a very sophisticated market at the forefront, looking for cashless, looking for anything to get mm -hmm. them to the next level. It's very impressive to see how Native America is fighting towards the first and forefront. Their mm -hmm. chairman, uh, Chairman Ernie Stevens, is, is quite the visionary. And third but not least, the market that I absolutely love. Mm -hmm. It's called the route and street market. So mm -hmm. it's corner stores, it's restaurants, it's bars. That's probably the most unsafe part of the, the market. Mm -hmm. uh, it's because before access showed up, it was cost prohibitive to put uh, cutting edge systems in place to mm -hmm. protect that market. There's markets right now, like the state of Georgia and the United States and mm -hmm. other markets that are fighting very hard for legitimacy, fighting very hard for transparency and traceability. And we serve that market as well. Because we're cloud, it's the same work for us to install one machine in one location mm -hmm. or 1,000 machines in one location. It's the same thing. 
We yeah. plug in our IoT device and everything else has gone to the cloud. It's awesome. And Earl, um, I guess a, a big question for you. Um, so a lot, a lot of this conversation has been around, obviously, the you know, know your client rules. It's been around, um, you know, anti-money laundering and, and kind of keeping everybody safe, right? Do you think it's possible for the industry, for the gaming industry to evolve to be, you know, a, a safe industry where, where these things are all possible, where we the know your client part um, and the anti-money laundering part? Like, do you think that's possible in the near future? 100%, mm -hmm. without a doubt, 100%, it's in cement. First of all, mm -hmm. you have the university, you have UNLV here in Las mm -hmm. Vegas. Craig and his team, they are solely focused on educating and bringing all of the regulators, the policymakers, to mm -hmm. that point. You have the International Association of Gaming Regulators, mm -hmm. Jason, their president, is a visionary in this mm -hmm. field as well. Peter DeRayet at the International Gaming Standards Association mm -hmm. has been working on this for 15 years. Yeah. And now we have the Government Blockchain Association that's bringing out a government, uh, bringing out a blockchain maturity model. Before there was no technology to do this. So you could want to do this 10 years yeah. ago, but the cost of trying to do this. And then Access showed up with a very affordable IOT device to put inside of a machine. The rest is in mm -hmm. the cloud. And then the regulators all showed up and rallied around it. And then UNLD showed up, the educators. So once you have the policymaker, mm -hmm. once you have the educators, once you have the standards organizations, all you need mm -hmm. then is technology. Mm. So we're in a perfect storm right now. The recipe is on the table to make the greatest pie in the history of KYC. Yeah. I absolutely see no reason why you're going to not see the gaming industry, the land-based gaming industry, mm -hmm. being the beacon of KYC in the next two to three years. Wow, it's amazing. Um, so Earl, I just have to say, I learned a lot from listening to you and, and about gaming, what's happening next. And uh, I hope the audience did as well. Uh, I know you're, you're busy and you're in the middle of it all. I think you said the perfect storm was your words um, over at access.ai and all the changes that are going on. So I, I just have to ask, um, what's next? I mean, what's next for you? What's next for uh, access.ai? Our mission is probably going to continue the same as it is today for the next two to three years, which is educate, educate, educate. Yeah. One of my greatest mentors, her name is Jumana uh, from Microsoft. She said to me, never sell, always educate. The best sell is the greatest education. So mm -hmm. I say we still have two or three years more of educating. In that mm -hmm. time, we have, new, we have new divisions coming online, like a media division, yeah. We have virtual POS is coming out. We've got a whole bunch of products coming out mm -hmm. this year. Now that the market is ready to consume them, they've been in our lab yeah. forever, <laughs> but we wanted to make sure out of respect that we brought things out at the right time. Mm -hmm. And 2022, 222 is a very pivotal year in the gaming industry worldwide. So this year is the year we're probably going to hit the gas and roll out more products than we've mm -hmm. done before just because COVID has brought a level of maturity, mm -hmm. a level of receptiveness mm -hmm. and an ease to work with technology because everybody was isolated, everybody was virtual, yeah. everybody was cashless. That catalyst for us is really the inflection point where over the next three years, we'll take our rightful mm -hmm. place in the industry where we started out 10 years ago. What a great story. Um, so Earl, if somebody's watching this and they want to learn more um, about Axis, I mean, what's the best way for them to do that? Um, all my friends and I hang out at access.ai. I'm pretty prolific on uh, LinkedIn, so I'm easy to find there. Once again, we take our role of education very, very seriously. Yeah. They're the two easiest ways to find me. And as my mother once said, uh, you're way too easy to find on Google. So that's another way as well. But at the end of the day, anybody that really needs me always finds me. So I'm pretty easy to find. Fantastic. And uh, for the audience, we'll put we'll put all of that information in the show notes as well for this uh, episode. So you could just click on it 
and uh, head right on over and check out access.ai. And uh, speaking of the audience, if this is your first time with Mission Matters, we're a platform dedicated to really um, amplifying the, the voices and the messages of business owners and entrepreneurs that are out there um, looking to make a difference. They're out there in the marketplace doing great things. And uh, if that's the type of content that you like or that is excites you, um, then we definitely welcome you to hit that subscribe button because we have many more mission-based individuals coming up on the line and uh, we don't want you to miss a thing. And Earl, really, it has been a pleasure. Uh, thanks a lot again for coming on the show and uh, wishing you much more continued success with Access.ai. Thank you very much. I was grateful.